This is how I made the person disappear effect. In the entire neighborhood. Until now. So first things first, to make the subject disappear, we need a clean plate of the background, which is at frame, let's see here, we want the full house. Let's go frame 715. So I'm gonna add a time stretcher node and add it to my fusion page, pipe my media one in into the time stretcher and type in 715 on frame 715. Now this time stretcher shows the same frame for the entire sequence of the clip. Now we need to paste this back into the video and track it into place so that it matches the house with the movement of the camera. To do that, we're gonna use a planar tracker. Let's add a tr planar tracker, plug it in and view it. I want my subject to disappear on frame 662. Fun fact, you can just type it in right there to take you towards the frame. I need to mask around my subject and around any other planes that are gonna mess up my track because the plane that I want to follow is just this piece of the house. So I'm gonna track it where I'm gonna draw out my mask. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm gonna hit set and I'm gonna track till end. But again, I only need up until frame 715 because that's the point where I'm gonna stop replacing the video. Uh, so I'm gonna stop it halfway through. So if we're tracking forward till end, now I'm gonna stop it here because we don't need to track the rest of it. It's just gonna waste our time. Now let's change the planar tracker operation mode from track to corner pin. Let's plug in our time stretcher into the green input of the planar tracker. And now our footage is tracked to our clip. But obviously it's not the result that we want. I just wanted to quick hop in and say that ideally you take two separate shots when you're videoing the footage. So you wanna take one shot with the subject and one shot without the subject. But if you didn't and you need to remove them in post, this is how you do it. Back to the video. Inside of the planar tracker, I'm gonna to go to frame 715 and I'm gonna match the corner pin locations with the edge of the canvas. And you want to be extremely detailed about this because the better you line it up, the smoother this is going to look. I'm going to set a keyframe on each of those locations. Now let's press keyframe on the enable button, go forward one frame and click enable again to disable it. Let's go back to frame 662 or the start of when we want the, the subject to disappear. Hit a keyframe, go back one frame and disable the planar tracker. So now if we play it back, it's almost like we took two separate clips, one of our subject and then it goes forward, the subject disappears and then the clip seamlessly blends through at frame 715. And at the start, it jumps a little bit too much because the frames are shot at different perspectives. So we're gonna do our best to match up the big bold lines in the frame. And we're gonna do that by going into the planar tracker and reducing the blend a little bit. And as you can see, I'm just going to try line up the big black lines in the shot so that it matches a little bit closer to the original. Just like so, that's pretty close. That's gotta be somewhere around there. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be as close as possible. That's perfect, it is keyframed. Let's turn the blend back up. And now when we watch this through, it's a little bit less drastic of an effect. So now we pretty much have two separate video clips. We have a video clip with the subject and without the subject, but the jump is really harsh. So we have to hide that with distortion, camera shake, and some glow and some effects. So let's get into that. All right, let's add a displace node to our composition. Next, let's add a fast noise node and plug it into the displace. With the fast noise selected, I'm gonna change the color to gradient, bring these two guys in a little bit, and let's change the black to sort of a light gray. Let's go into noise, let's increase the scale as well as increase the detail, and we're gonna give it a bit of a seethe rate so that as we're playing through it, it is moving around. Now if we check our displace node, we can see our footage is being affected by it, but it is affecting the entire frame, so we're gonna add an ellipse mask. We're gonna increase the soft edge so that it blends in. And now if we reduce the refraction strength, we can see that our frame is being sucked in or being pushed out. Let's go back to frame 662. Let's suck the footage in as much as we want to. So let's go around in negative one. Let's add a keyframe. Then let's go back seven frames. Let's add another keyframe and put the value at zero. Let's go back to frame 662, go forward seven frames. Change the value back to zero. Now if we watch this, the footage is being sucked in and then being pushed back out. Let's open our spline editor with display selected. Let's take our refraction strength and turn it into a sharp V. So let's drag these handles forward, just like so, and let's bring these handles back in. 
Now the effect is going to ease it in and then pop back out. Now let's use the edge detect to add some glow to our image. Change edge detect from RGB edges to grayscale edges and enable edge mask overlay. Now let's use the same ellipse mask and add it to our edge detect. Let's change the edge color of our edge detect to a teal color. Go back to frame 662 and adjust the glow to your liking. Add a keyframe to blend. Let's go back seven frames and reduce the blend to zero. Go back to frame 662 and go forward seven frames. Reduce the blend to zero. Same thing with the edge detect. Let's open the spline editor and turn this into a sharp V. I find that this ellipse mask is too large, so let's just put it over our subject. Let's go back a little bit so we can see where he is. Reduce the width possibly and put it around right there. Now the distortion is going to affect less of the frame. Now when our subject disappears, let's add a bit of a shockwave to our footage. So we're going to add another displace node. We're going to copy our fast noise node and plug it into our displace. Now we're going to take a new ellipse mask and plug it into our fast noise. On frame 662, when our subject disappears, I'm going to put this ellipse mask right over the center. I'm going to keyframe width and height. Now I'm going to go forward roughly 20 to 25 frames and increase our width and height so that it encompasses the whole frame. Right now the distortion applies the entire frame, so what we're going to do is we're going to change it from a solid and increase the border width. We're also going to increase the soft edge. With the displace node selected, we're going to increase the refraction strength a little bit and possibly increase the light power. Let's increase the soft edge of our ellipse a little bit more and let's increase the detail of our fast noise node as well as the scale and the seed rate actually. With the ellipse selected, we're going to go into the spline editor, select the keyframes, ease it, and we're actually going to take our, uh, let's go with our width first, and it's going to start fast and end slow. Same thing with our height. Let's start fast and end slow. We don't want this effect to take place before our subject disappears. So let's put a keyframe on the level of our ellipse, go back one frame and turn it down. Now over the course of the sequence, we want this distortion effect to slowly slow down, the shockwave to slow down as it reaches the edge of the frame. So at that point, let's turn down the level and let's add those same keyframes to refraction strength. So when the subject disappears, hit a keyframe. Then when you set your same keyframe with the ellipse, uh, turn your displacement down to zero. Let's add a little bit more of an effect to our shock wave. And we're gonna do that by adding prism blur. And I'm going to plug the mask of the ellipse into prism blur as well. And now the shock wave is going to have a bit of blur or aberration in it. So we turned our aberration strength up and now our shock wave has some aberration in it. And we're getting pretty close. Now we just need to add some camera shake. After the prism blur, let's add the camera shake effect. On frame 662 is when we want it to be the most intense. So I'm gonna add a keyframe on one. Let's go back seven frames. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And set the strength at zero. Let's go forward seven frames from when the subject disappears and set the strength at zero. Now let's change the edges from canvas to duplicate. Let's add some motion blur to the camera shake by going into settings, enabling motion blur and turning the quality up to eight or higher. And there you have it. The effect is done and here's your final Find result. Your until now. I hope it goes without saying, but you can adjust these parameters to your liking. So if you want more glow and less distortion or vice versa, you can go ahead and do that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any suggestions for future videos, let me know down below in the comments. Till next time.